Hi everybody! In this quick video tutorial, I'll walk you through the exact steps how to install the long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is as of the moment 2404, on a PC with AMD or Intel CPU. For the demonstration, I'll be using this old ThinkPad T490 that you know from my previous videos. Recently, I swapped the drive and I need to install an operating system, so this is a good opportunity to show you how to do it. Step number one is to prepare a bootable USB stick with Ubuntu 2404. First I'm going to download the image and after that flash it on this USB stick from another computer. Open a web browser and visit ubuntu.com. From the products menu select Ubuntu desktop. Click the green button download Ubuntu desktop. The download of the Ubuntu installation image will automatically start. Please patiently wait until it completes. The total time that is required for the download depends on your internet connection speed. You need a special software to flash the image that you've just downloaded it on the USB stick. This way you're gonna make this USB stick bootable. If you are already an Ubuntu user and you have Ubuntu on another computer, you can use the um, Make Startup Disk uh, application with graphical user interface. If you are an existing Windows user who is switching to Ubuntu, on Windows you can use an application called Rufus and uh, Ubuntu provides um, detailed instructions how to use it to flash this image. A link is available in the description of the video. Step number two is to plug the USB stick into your PC, in this case my ThinkPad T490, and to boot from it. The procedure to boot from a USB stick is slightly different depending on your hardware. In this case, I'm going to turn on the Lenovo ThinkPad T490. After that, immediately I'm going to hit enter. After that, a startup interactive menu will pop up on the screen. I'll press F12 to select a temporary boot device. This way, I'll enter the boot menu and from it, I'm going to select USB flash disk. The exact steps for booting from a USB stick depend on the hardware, so they might be slightly different on your PC. However, in general, the procedure is the same. Step number three is to proceed with the actual installation. From the group menu, which appears after booting from the USB stick, hit enter to select install or try Ubuntu. After that, please patiently wait for a few seconds until the installation wizard loads. To speed up the video and save everyone's time, I'll fast forward this loading. After that, follow the on-screen instructions. Select a language, in this case I'm going to select English, click next. On the next screen you can select a Wi-Fi network and connect to it or just do an offline installation. On the next screen select install Ubuntu, click next and after that click interactive installation. There's an, also an option for the so-called automated installation. This is useful when you have many different uh, computers, but in this case, I'm installing Ubuntu to a single laptop. On the next screen, you'll be asked what apps would you like to install with. There are two options, default selection or extended selection. I recommend you to choose the extended selection. You'll be asked would you like to install the recommended proprietary software, and yes, honestly, it's needed most of the time. Next is the most important question, where and how to install Ubuntu. At this point of the installation, it is important to select the appropriate drive. In my case, it's very easy because this Lenovo ThinkPad T490 has only a single SSD. Uh, however, if you have an older computer that has both SSD and a hard drive, I highly recommend you to select the uh, SSD. I will select Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu. Keep in mind this is gonna wipe out the whole SSD and at the end of the installation on this SSD I'll have only the Ubuntu that I'm installing right now. This is the danger zone. Make sure you don't have any valuable information on this drive because we're gonna erase it. Click next and on the follow up screen uh, create your username and set up a password. Finally, on the next screen, select your time zone. I'm in Bulgaria, so I'll type in Sofia, although I live in Plovdiv. We're ready to proceed with the installation by copying files, but before that, we have to review our choices. Keep in mind that, as I mentioned, everything will be wiped out from the drive and we'll have a single operating system, which is Ubuntu, after the successful installation. All looks good to me, so I've just clicked the big green install button. 
Let me repeat it once again to make sure that we're all on the same page because obviously this video will be watched by beginners. I'm installing Ubuntu 2404 on the only SSD of this ThinkPad T490. This means that all previously stored data on the SSD will be wiped out as part of the installation. And at the end of the installation, I'll have this laptop uh, booting Ubuntu. It's a single boot, only Ubuntu, it's not a dual boot. I think the magic of video editing, I'll fast forward this installation process. In general, it was really fast. It took me less than half an hour to complete the whole installation. After successful installation, you're gonna see this message, Ubuntu 2404 is installed and ready to be used. At this point, you have to press the big green button that is with the label Restart Now. That's it, the installation is ready. Now I have to unplug the USB stick and reboot the computer. So here we go, I remove the USB stick and after that I press the Enter key. Immediately after that the laptop will restart and it's going to automatically boot the Ubuntu version that we've just installed on the previous steps. There is a login screen on which I'll be asked to enter my user, actually there is a single user on this computer which we've enter during the installation and I have to type in the password. This is the same password that I've set during the previous steps. When you boot Ubuntu for the very first time after the installation, you'll see this welcome screen. It will ask you for some minor tweaks and adjustments. Just follow the on-screen instructions and adjust them depending your own personal preferences. You can change them later on. That's it. Everything is set up and now I'm going to do a quick test. I'm going to open a terminal because I love the terminal and I'm going to run two commands. The first one shows me the Ubuntu version. So we've just installed Ubuntu 2404.2. This is the long-term support release. The next long-term support release will be in 2026. The second command shows me the Linux kernel version, which is 6.11. After rebooting, Ubuntu has successfully started. I've logged in as my user. I connected to my Wi-Fi network and it's highly recommended to do an update to make sure that I'm actually running up to date the latest version of all packages available on the system. Typically advanced users do these type of upgrades from the terminal by typing in several commands, but uh, this is a beginner friendly video. So instead we're gonna use a graphical user interface application called software updater. Check for any updates, there will be some and install them. At this point, you'll be asked to enter your password. In Linux distributions such as Debian or Ubuntu, packages are changing all the time. There are security fixes, some upgrades, new features, bug fixes. So when we download the image for the installation, most probably it contains some packages that are older to the newest versions. And maybe some of these newest versions have been actually released at the day when you're installing them. So performing this type of an upgrade immediately after the installation is highly recommended. Actually, this was quite an important upgrade because as part of it, the Linux kernel has been also updated. This requires a restart. So I'm going to restart the computer once again. So here we go. After the restart, the computer started again and booted Ubuntu and I've logged in with my user and password, I've opened a terminal and I've checked the kernel version again. So previously we were using kernel version 6.11.0-17 and now we have 6.11.0-19. A minor detail for end users, which don't pay attention to. However, the kernel version is important for engineers. Thank you very much for watching this video. As you have seen nowadays, the installation of the Ubuntu Linux distribution is straightforward and very simple. The whole process took me less than 30 minutes. I'm a Linux user, so the only operating system that I need on this computer is Ubuntu. However, uh, it's also possible to do a dual boot and have both Windows and Ubuntu. As a professional software engineer working on embedded devices, I have to tell you that I'm far, far more efficient using Linux on my computers. Um, free and open source software and Linux distributions such as Debian or Ubuntu are very reliable. They work really fast on this type of hardware. Um, they're more secure and most importantly, 
they are free and make you or your workflow very efficient. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.